Hi, I'm Scott Cotton with the University of Wyoming Extension. Drought is one of those things that challenges producers and landowners in the Rocky Mountain states every year. The fact is that, look at its statistics in the Rocky Mountains, 5.7 years out of every 10 somewhere in some counties are dealing with drought. So as an educator and as a range ecologist and especially as a producer, we look at ways to evaluate pastures so we can figure out where we are with a drought and where we need to plan in the future. One of those is monitoring, of course, and, and if you've got a good monitoring approach, it may include like what I do, going out in the fall and looking at the growth points on grass. To, even if you've got fair grass plants, it doesn't matter how much moisture you get. If the growth points aren't there, the leaves won't grow. So I'd like to discuss some ways that we can really sit down and evaluate pastures to see how bad we can deal with the drought in the next year, whether it comes or not. So come on in, let's have a little conversation about range readiness, pasture readiness, and how it relates to drought. As I mentioned earlier, drought can uh, affect us all in a number of different ways, but it's not always about available grass. It's about available water for grass and livestock and how that relates to pasture readiness. So monitoring, as we discussed just a little earlier, is all about grass stability. Is your grass community maintaining its plant numbers? Is the root mass stable? Or is it shrinking and getting farther apart? So there's a couple ways to do that interaction with um, your grazing habits. But first, let's talk about water availability. Let's look at this diagram here, and it's just a sample of four or five pastures, and each blue dot or ribbon is an area where there's water. So when we have snowfall or we have a water source, it's always important to have available water for the livestock, and that's part of the drought too, not just water available for the grass. But in assessing that, it's all about pasture readiness. And I like to use a tool that was developed by a number of rangeland ecologists called a grazing response index. And it can be adjusted depending on your plant community, your sites, or conditions from year to year or management protocols. So often as not, like this grazing stick that I developed years ago, we can put that resource on something and it's a real simple tool. And what that is really is that we want livestock and pasture managers to assess the readiness of their pastures after, but especially before they're getting ready to move into them. So if you're getting ready to go into a dormant season, do an assessment on the grazing response index about are my pastures ready? So it's based on the general guideline. It's based on adding up a number score for each pasture. One part of the score is defoliation. You'll have a plus one, a zero, or a negative one for how much you removed. Percentage of use, same thing, a plus one, zero, or negative one. And then recovery opportunity for that plant community is a plus one, zero, or negative one. Now you add those three up and you're gonna end up with a plus three to a minus three. And you need to understand that those numbers, you can adjust them based on drought, based on your plant community, based on your location, or based on your management system. But for instance, if you came in here and you looked at those three things, defoliation, percentage of use, and recovery, and you looked at this pasture number four, and you said, okay, well, we hit it pretty hard, but not too hard, so defoliation was a zero, percent of use was plus one, and recovery was zero, you're only gonna have a plus one for this pasture. You go through the same process for other pastures. Pasture three, which may be around your house, you might have a negative one. Over here where you calved and you held real long, you may have a negative two. And over here, 
something you were in and out, you may have a plus two when you add those three factors up. And it's important to do this because if you're sitting here with cattle in a feed yard and you're figuring out during the drought which pastures are ready to go to first, you're going to look at these numbers and say, whoa, you know, this number two pasture down here with the plus two on the grazing response index, that is the very most ready to graze again. So if we have to go into one first, we can't hold. We're going to go into the positive scores first and then plan ahead and go into the next time we get ready to move. We're going to do this assessment all over again based on how the grass is growing, what we have for drought, what we have for precip, all your conditions and your herd management system. This is a good way to assess whether those pastures, where they compare to each other for readiness. Now there's some other factors with this and one of them's trigger dates. We have trigger dates that we've developed across the US for readiness to know when you're going into a drought. The idea is there's a certain date on each year that you normally would know whether you got normal precept or not. And that includes the precept that feeds into your stock tanks and your rivers like snow. So you're gonna go into these trigger dates and you need to develop your own, but we can give you some guidelines. For instance, in a lot of the Rocky Mountain states, including Wyoming, the, it may be April 15th if you, if you get rain late. April 15th is the date that you know that you've got normal precept or low precept or you're going into a drought. It may be earlier, maybe April 1st, but you need to learn those trigger dates and extension staff can help you determine that. We already got some predetermined ones, but you can decide what to do with that. When you're looking at pasture readiness and you're looking at getting ready to go, it's always a good idea if you can find a way to start a rotational system with monitoring where you can have what we call a grass bank. You can have that one pasture that was used very little, it's that plus three. And that pasture is your, is your safety net. That pasture is that one that if you do have a drought or a multiple year drought, you can use it where you have been letting it recover. And that changes for each ecosite in each location. Because some may require two years to recover from a year's worth of use. Down on your bottoms where you have sub-irrigated ground, it may only be 40 days. You need to learn those so that you know which of those pastures is in that peak condition that you could set aside and have it ready in case you need it during a drought. So if you don't have that pasture, you've only got a few options for pasture readiness and for drought management in itself. Those include looking at these trigger dates and figuring out, oh, we need to figure out what our options are. So options are the thing you need to, to look at. Uh, when you're short and you're going into a, a bad drought or a, a second year drought or you just have drought impacts, you can always lease more resources like additional pasture, which is kind of challenging sometimes if the drought's very wide. Or you can feed livestock or haul them somewhere else where you can lease them. Or you can downsize. Now the nice part is if you do a grazing response index and you monitor and you know your trigger dates, it doesn't take too long where you get into a pretty good habit of knowing exactly how to assess what's coming up. But there is a couple of websites that are handy and one is the drought resource website and it is drought.unl.edu. And on that website, drought.unl.edu, it tells you the projections, it'll give you the drought monitor, but there's also some ranch plan tools on there. There's also a tool called a standard precipitation index, which you can go into for a county and tell exactly how last year, how this year, and what the projection is for next year is going to be for precipitation. The other thing is the patterns. The High Plains Climate Center and this drought center can tell you how the patterns have shifted. So when you're getting ready to do pasture readiness in the face of drought and figure out what's going on, we're always here to help you. We have range related people such as myself that can help you use these tools. When it comes to monitoring, we've got a number of tools including that phone app called GrassNap that can help you see the changes both in visual 
and in notes, and you can carry it on your phone. It's pretty handy. I'm Scott Cotton for working with pasture assessment for drought impacts. Get a hold of your local extension office and we'll help you as we can. Thank you.